Fiora, the most feared duelist in all of Valoran, is celebrated not only for the swift strikes of her blue steel rapier, but also for her sharp wit and no-nonsense demeanor. Hailing from House Laurent in the Kingdom of Demacia, Fiora rose to prominence after taking command of her family in the aftermath of a scandal that nearly brought them to ruin. Despite House Laurent's tarnished reputation, Fiora is determined to reclaim her family's honor and position them once again among Demacia's esteemed elite. Through unwavering determination and exceptional skill, Fiora strives to restore her family's legacy and uphold the noble ideals of her homeland. Welcome back, lore lovers, to another captivating journey into the rich tapestry of League of Legends lore. Today, we delve into the storied history of Fiora, the Grand Duelist of Demacia, exploring her intricate relationships with fellow champions and the noble houses of Runeterra. Fiora, the formidable duelist of Valoran, is renowned not only for her fierce demeanor and sharp intellect, but also for the unmatched speed of her blue steel rapier. Born into House Laurent within the Kingdom of Demacia, Fiora assumed control of her family amidst scandal that threatened their very existence. Despite House Laurent's shattered reputation, Fiora devotes herself tirelessly to restoring their honor and reinstating them among Demacia's esteemed elite. From a young age, Fiora defied societal norms and surpassed all expectations set before her. While her mother commissioned lifelike dolls for her amusement, Fiora preferred wielding her brother's rapier, clandestinely receiving lessons from him. Her father's gift of dressmaking mannequins intended for fashion design became tools for perfecting her lunges and reposts. Fiora's unwavering determination and unconventional pursuits exemplify her relentless pursuit of excellence in both swordsmanship and familiar redemption. Throughout her life, Fiora epitomized the noble virtues of Demacia, relentlessly pursuing perfection and refusing to tolerate any slight against her honor or family's ideals. Born as the youngest daughter of House Laurent, Fiora faced the prospect of being a mere pawn in the political machinations of noble alliances, destined for a marriage that she vehemently opposed. Despite her objections, a marriage was arranged with a branch of House Crownguard, prompting Fiora to take a bold stand against her fate. In a dramatic defiance of societal expectations, Fiora publicly renounced the arranged marriage at the ceremony, proclaiming that she would rather die than be controlled by another's will. This act of defiance led to a duel being demanded by the offended groom's family, a duel that Fiora's father, as master of House Laurent, was obligated to accept. Knowing the dire consequences of defeat, Fiora's father resorted to desperate measures, attempting to drag the opponent to secure victory for his daughter. However, this deceitful act backfired, resulting in his arrest and bringing shame upon House Laurent for years to come. Despite the consequences, Fiora's unwavering determination and commitment to her principles marked her as a true exemplar of Demacian honor and resilience. Demacian law, unyielding and severe, cast its judgment upon Fiora's father for his grave transgression against honor. Facing public humiliation and exile, he awaited his fate on the eve of execution. In a private moment before his demise, Fiora visited her father's cell, their exchange shrouded in secrecy. Amidst the shadows of ancient traditions, a long-forgotten code of honor emerged, a chance for redemption to a ritualistic duel within the Hall of Blades. Father and daughter confronted each other in a breathtaking display of skill and sorrow. The clash of their blades echoed a poignant farewell, a testament to their bond even in the throes of combat. Though tears glistened in her eyes, Fiora's resolve remained unyielding. With a heavy heart, she delivered the final decisive strike that ensured her family's survival in Demacia. In a solemn moment of triumph and tragedy, Fiora emerged as the unexpected head of House Laurent, her rapier now symbolizing not only her mastery of combat, but also her unyielding dedication to honor and legacy. Despite the lingering shadows of scandal, Fiora rose to lead House Laurent with wisdom and shrewdness, leaving behind the impetuousness of her youth. Mastering both the blade and the art of negotiation, she navigated the intricate web of politics with clarity and a directness that some found unsettling. 
detractors whispered of her house's tarnished reputation and questioned the property of a woman ruling a noble house, but only in harsh tones. Fiora swiftly silenced such gossip with a swift stroke of her rapier, challenging those who dared besmirch her honor. Yet even in her duels, she displayed a calculated pragmatism, offering her opponents a chance to preserve their honor without bloodshed, though none have dared accept her terms. With House Laurent's fortunes on demand, Fiora attracted numerous suitors, yet none have met her exacting standards. Many speculate that Fiora herself orchestrates rigorous tests for potential suitors, ensuring her independence and authority remain unchallenged. Traditionally, marriage would entail seeding power, but Fiora has never been one for tradition. As she continues to defy convention and uphold the honor of her house, Fiora's legend grows. Her rapier poised to cut down any who would dare question her resolve or underestimate her prowess. In the heart of Demacia, Fiora's rule stands as a testament to unyielding determination and the uncompromising pursuit of excellence on her own terms. In the story A Matter of Honor, Fiora stands resolute in the Hall of Blades, poised to confront Umberto, a man exuding unwavering confidence. She observed him conversing with four men, who bear a striking resemblance, likely his brothers, all displaying an air of arrogance and disdain as they begrudgingly attend her challenge. As the dawn's light filters through the horse laced windows, casting ethereal patterns upon the pale marble floor, spectators gather eagerly, drawn by morbid curiosity to witness the impending duel. Among them are members of both houses, onlookers seeking entertainment and those with a voyeuristic thirst for bloodshed. Fiora's older brother, Amdar, approaches her, presenting a midland rapier with a blue steel blade, a weapon that shimmers with a captivating play of light. He questions her resolve, prompting Fiora to reaffirm her purpose. She recalls the slanderous tales spread by Umberto and his boastful brothers, recognizing the importance of upholding her family's honor and setting a precedent against idle gossip. With unwavering determination, Fiora asserts her stance against the reckless tongues of braggarts. Her brother, acknowledging her resolve, steps aside, allowing Fiora to face Umberto and his cohorts in the ultimate test of skill and honor. In this pivotal moment, Fiora's poised blade embodies not only her prowess as a duelist, but also her unyielding commitment to the principles that define her as a leader of House Laurent. Fiora, poised and focused, signalized the commencement of the duel with purposeful blade movements, her resolved palpable. As Umberto turned, his gaze lingered disrespectfully, drawing Fiora's ire, though she swiftly suppressed her emotions, knowing that sentiment had no place in the imminent clash of swords. Umberto brandished a flamboyant Demacian cavalry saber, adorned with ornate details unfit for serious combat, a choice that irked Fiora, reflecting his arrogance and disregard for the gravity of their impending duel. They assumed their positions, mirroring each other's introductory swordplay, a customary ritual to acknowledge the significance of their little engagement. Despite the choreographed dance of the duel, Fiora remained acutely aware of the gravity of the situation and the laws that govern such confrontations. In adherence to tradition, Fiora extended a courteous introduction, aiming to maintain the veneer of civility amid the impending violence. However, Umberto's brash retort underscored his disdain, dismissing Fiora's gesture with competuous brevity. Undeterred by Umberto's arrogance, Fiora readied herself for the duel, her commitment to honor and justice unwavering. With each step and calculated strike, she embodied the essence of House Laurent's legacy, a testament to her unyielding pursuit of excellence and redemption. Fiora remained composed, unfazed by Umberto's attempts to provoke her, and addressed him with unwavering resolve articulating the gravity of his transgressions against House Laurent. In response to Umberto's dismissive attitude, Fiora reiterated the purpose of their duel, to restore her family's honor through his blood. Umberto, playing to the crowd with misplaced bravado, acknowledged the reason for his presence but underestimated Fiora's determination. With chilling certainty, Fiora presented Umberto with a choice to submit with a symbolic act of retribution by having his right ear severed or to face certain death in their impending duel. Her calm demeanor belied the gravity of her words, emphasizing the inevitability of his defeat should he choose to fight. 
Umberto, still defiant and underestimating Fiora's prowess, hesitated to yield. In response, Fiora pragmatically reminded him of the old Dearsin's awareness of her skill, offering him an opportunity to preserve his life with a lasting mark of shame as a badge of honor. In the tense silence that followed, Fiora raised her blade, poised to execute the consequences of Umberto's decision. Her unwavering determination and the weight of Dimasian tradition underscore the gravity of the moment, a testament to her unyielding commitment to justice and the restoration of House Laurent's honor. In the intense climax of the duel, Umberto's reckless charge was met with Fiora's calculated defense and little precision. With instinctive grace, she evaded his thrust and retaliated with a swift, decisive strike that left the crowd stunned by the suddenness of the duel's conclusion. As Umberto crumpled to the ground, clutching his mortal wound, Fiora displayed the somber acknowledgement of her victory, offering a respectful bow to her fallen opponent. Though she took no pleasure in the outcome, Fiora recognized that Umberto's actions had left her little choice but to act decisively in defense of her family's honor. Umberto's brothers, bearing witness to his defeat, approached to claim his lifeless body, their shock palpable. Fiora's older brother, Emdar, inquired about the tally of such encounters, a testament to the frequency with which Fiora had been compelled to defend her family's honor through little duels. Fiora's response revealed the weight of her burden and the relentless pursuit of redemption through each confrontation, an unyielding quest to restore House Laurent's dignity even at the cost of life's last. Her resolve remained steadfast, despite the toll it exacted upon her conscience. As Amdar questioned the purpose of this cycle of violence and honor, Fiora's silence spoke volumes. In the shadow of her victories and sacrifices, the concept of the redemption remained elusive, obscured by the relentless demands of the Masian tradition and familial duty. But in the aftermath of yet another duel, Fiora's enigmatic resolve echoed through the Hall of Blades, a testament to her unyielding commitment to honor, justice, and the enduring legacy of House Laurent. In regards to the relations Fiora has with the champions we know about, we can say that, given Jax's reputation as an exceptional fighter, Fiora might be drawn to the prospect of facing him in battle. Additionally, Jax's interest in recruiting talented warriors for his rebuilt Kohari could lead to an alliance or rivalry between them. Fiora's history with the Crown Guard House is marked by conflict and resentment. Her refusal to marry into their family resulted in a death duel involving her father Sebastian. Tiana, a member of the Crown Guard family, orchestrated the duel to ensure her kinsman victory, adding to the tension between Fiora and the Crown Guards. This unresolved animosity could fuel future confrontations or alliances with Guerin and Lux. Fiora and Garen have a professional relationship, with Fiora assisting in training the Dauntless Vanguard, the elite soldiers of Demacia. While they acknowledge each other's skills, Fiora avoids training directly with Garen due to the expected outcome of their sparring sessions being obvious. Their shared experience fighting against a dragon further solidifies their bond as allies and comrades. And there you have it, lore lovers. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive into Fiora's compelling story. If you want more lore discussions and insights, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Lion Drag. Join our Discord community for lively debates and further exploration of League of Legends lore. Until next time, may the legends of Runeterra inspire and enthrall you. See you in the next adventure.